each with different levels of Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I'm going to bring to you a second shelf spotlight. I have had these books stacked up on one of the shelves in here in my library room since the first shelf spotlight that I did and I want to put them away and I, do, I need to organize this room and I need to do this video so that I can put these books back where they belong on my shelves. The first shelf spotlight I did, I highlighted books that I own that are big books, 600 pages or more. And in the comments, someone wrote that they thought Stephen King's 112263 would have been in that list. And sure enough, it is. It's 842 pages. It is a chunk of monk a book and I should have included it. But that got me to thinking, with this series of shelf spotlights, I'm going to be talking about a variety of different topics of books that are on my shelves, and I may miss some here and there, and I have to be okay with that. I'm just going to highlight a junk of books and let you see some of the books that I have on my shelves, since there are so many. And if I miss some in a certain category, that's okay. But if you think of some, I mean, always feel free to talk about it in the comments. That's fine. I was not at all angry that I missed this, but yeah, I do have quite a few big books on my shelves. Speaking of big books, today I have 11 books that are from 500 to 600 pages. Because I have so many big books on my shelves, in that first video I decided to start with 600 and go up from there. It would have been too long if I included the 500 page books as well, but I just want to wrap up the big books series of the shelf spotlight and tell you about my books that are 500 pages or more. Well, 500 to 600 pages. There are 11 here, like I said, and I've actually read five of them, which I'm pretty pleased about that. I do like to read big books. However, I also feel like I'm missing out if I spend too much time with a big book, but five of these I have read already. Let me tell you about the 11 books. We're gonna go from shortest, closest to 500 pages, to longest, closest to 600 pages. So the first one I have here is actually one of my lowest rated books on my shelves right now, and it is The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. Coming up later this summer, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video of that lowest rated books that I filmed, I believe, last September got posted. I'm going to do a try chapter and decide if I'm going to keep these lowest rated books on my shelves. This, obviously, J.K. Rowling also wrote the Harry Potter series, which all of you know. Um, and I have a feeling this is lowest rated because people were hoping for something a little more like Harry Potter and this is very different. I think it's a little slower paced. It's definitely an adult novel, a little bit of a mystery, I think. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really know anything about it, but it does have more than 500 pages. It's a hefty tome. Next, at 506 pages, I have Diane Chamberlain, Keeper of the Light. I've heard a lot of people talking about Diane Chamberlain and so I grabbed this at a library sale. Uh, just to see if I would like her as an author. This one is another one I'm not sure I'm gonna like. Uh, we ha we follow this doctor, Olivia, who works in an ER, and a woman, a gunshot victim, is brought in, who is also the a young woman who is the object of her, of the doctor's husband's obsession. Um, so he's she is destroying their marriage. Um, she's married herself, this young woman who was shot, and... She dies on the operating table, and so there's lots of discussion around what the who this woman was and the impact that she had on the people's these three lives, mainly her husband, the doctor, and the doctor's husband. So yeah, I am not a huge fan of infidelity. I'm not sure that this is the book for me. If you've read this, Diane Chamberlain, maybe there's another one by her that I would like better, but regardless, this has 506 pages. A book on my series shelf, and I think the third in the series was in the longer video, but or in the longer books video, but this is A Gathering of Shadows. It's book two in the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. In this fantasy novel, there are four different Londons, and each London has a different level of magic. There are very few people who have the ability to go between the different Londons, and this man um, Kel has that ability. He brings objects between them and he's not supposed to do that. I liked the first one. I didn't like the audiobook at all. So I definitely want to read the hard copy of this second book before the end of the year, hopefully. At 520 pages is a book that I started this past Christmas but did not finish and that is Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. This is the only Rosamund Pilcher that I own and I definitely would like to get to it during the winter time, but I just didn't get to it this year. 
it's a chunker, 520 pages. Kind of a family drama contemporary, and I've heard just such good things about it, uh, but it definitely needs to be read in the winter time. Now, a book that I have read is Susanna Kearsley's The Winter Sea, and this has 527 pages. I really enjoyed this. Susanna Kearsley is, has quickly become a, one of my favorite authors. I need to read more from her. I have quite a few. This one involves an author who is writing a book about the Jacobite Rebellion in Scotland. And so she takes up residence in this little cottage along the cliffs in Scotland and has a strange experience where she begins having memories of her character, like one of her characters. And so this turns into a big situation. Like how is she remembering things that happened centuries ago? So pretty cool. Susanna Kearsley often deals with time warp travel type things. So yeah, I really like it. A book that I would love to get to someday is 629 pages, and that is Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. It starts in 1910, and we follow Ursula as she's born and dies right away and is born again and lives and then dies and then is born again. So she lives her life over and over and over, somewhat in a Groundhog Day kind of a vibe, but each life lasts different amounts of time. I don't know if she has memories of each of her lives, um, and I know that some of the lives last through World War I, World War II, so she keeps living life over and over, and I don't know what kind of resolution we're gonna get from that, but I def definitely have heard April from Getting Hunger With It rave about this book, so I definitely am interested in reading it. I read Transcription by Kate Atkinson and was underwhelmed by it, but I have high hopes for this one. Another book that I have read has 530 pages, and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is a World War II historical fiction, and we follow mainly two main characters, young characters, Mary Lore, who is a blind girl, and her father, who flee from Paris, I believe. And then we also follow Wilson, Wilhelm, Werner, Werner. And he is a young orphan who is very talented with tinkering, like fixing things and engineering type things. And he is kind of becomes a part of the Hitler youth. And so we follow these two storylines until um, at some point they may converge or not. But I thought the writing was really beautiful. I did think it was too long. Uh, I wasn't as blown away as a lot of other people, but it was still a solid World War II historical fiction. Then, one of my all-time favorite books has 564 pages, and it is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, another World War II historical fiction. In this one, we're in France, and we have the two, we have these two sisters, uh, what are their names? Vienne, 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 and Isabel. I had it right. Vianne has a daughter, has been married. Her husband it goes away to be a soldier in the war. And then Isabel is kind of this headstrong. Oh, Vianne is more homebody, taking care of things at home, strong in different ways than Isabel, who is a fighter and rebellious and outgoing. Um, both of them have very different roles to play during World War II. It's very heartwarming, and this was my first Kristen Hanna. This definitely helped me to fall in love with Kristen Hanna's storytelling. Love her. Three more. An author that I own quite a few but haven't read yet, you've seen this author before, with 572 pages is The Italian Girl by Lucinda Riley. I own quite a few of her books. I don't know much about this. It takes place in Italy, Secrets of the Past, Opera Houses, Naples. Yeah, very Italian sounding. An extraordinary talent and obsessive love. Ooh, that's the tagline. I don't know. Someday I'll get to some Lucinda Riley. <laughs> and the last two I've also read. We have a classic, Jane Eyre. This one has, oh man, I just threw it down, 582 pages. I don't need to say much about this by Charlotte Bronte. I love this edition. It's shimmery, which you can probably tell in the light in here, and purple, and I love it. I did not read this edition when I read it. It's kind of funny because there's so much margin and such small writing. Like, could you have made the words a little bigger and used the page a little more wisely? Please, please. But it's pretty, so I'll forgive them. <laughs> 
Okay, and the last book I absolutely love. It has 587 pages. I read this for middle grade March last year, and it's Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. This is a fantastic book. Also historical fiction. In this one, there is a, a little fairy tale element that starts and ends the book. And we learn about this harmonica that then passes through the lives of these three different characters. A young boy in Germany who needs to flee because of the war, World War II. And then um, brothers in Pennsylvania, I believe, who are about to be fostered out. They're orphans and they're about to go to a foster family. And then a young girl in California, a Mexican migrant worker family, um, whose good friends up the road were Japanese and just sent to a Japanese internment camp. This harmonica comes into their three lives and it's all just woven together so beautifully. And a little tip is if you are an audiobook listener, listen to this on audio because music, which plays such a big part of the story, is woven through the audio. It just was so lovely. Did not feel, it's surprising to me that my biggest 500 page book is a middle grade. It's not very often that you get a middle grade that's such a chunker. Fabulous book. So that is it. Those are the 11 books that are between five and 600 pages that I'm going to talk to you about. I'm I'm sure if I scoured my shelves, I could probably find a few more, but I think I'm going to aim for 10 to 12 books each time I do these shelf spotlights because more than that just gets to be a really long video. So I'm going to aim for 10 to 12. Let me know down below if you've read any of these chunkers, if you have any favorite books that are between five and 600 pages or anything else that you want to talk about. You know I love talking to you down in the comments. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.